Now, one of the most frustrating things in your artist week can be the answer to this question. What do I post on social media? Drum roll, all right? It's the eternal question, isn't it? You go on Instagram, for example, and you just see a whole load of posts on the feed from other people, and you think, oh yeah, that looks good, maybe I could have done that. Or perhaps you find that looking at what others are posting is even more overwhelming, right? How do you come up with content consistently? And not only content consistently, try saying that quite quickly, but actually meaningful content and more importantly, relevant content for your audience. So in today's video, three steps for social media content planning, I'm gonna show you a simple process where you can come up with over 90 pieces of content to post out on your social platforms. But not only that, they're gonna be strategically chosen and of course, they're going to be appropriate for your audience as well. So hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Sophie and I love to help artists just like you to set up, market and grow a highly successful art business doing what you love. Now, if you'd like more tips and tricks on how to build that successful art business, then you're in the right place. All right, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, let's dive in. Let's look at these three steps for social media content planning. Step number one, you need to define your audience. Now I speak about this an awful lot. Make sure to check out this video on where to find your target audience because that is gonna help you a little bit more. But when we're marketing, we need to have someone that we're speaking to, right? Because if we don't do that, we're putting a general message out there, well then really the marketing is just going to be falling flat and you're not gonna get the results that you want. So you need to ask, when you think of that audience, what is it they're actually looking for? I've got seven things that your audience might be looking for. That's gonna depend a little bit on where they are on the journey with you. Is this the first piece of content that they find? They're doing a bit of a search and your content has come up to answer their query, or have they already started to follow you and they are looking for specific content from you? So here are those seven things. First up, they might just be looking for some inspiration. They might be looking for how you do what you do. Perhaps they would like to see some behind some scenes footage where you work. Perhaps they have a problem that they need solving. So perhaps they're looking for some birthday gifts, presents for somebody, or they're doing some home decor shopping, or perhaps they really do follow you and they're waiting for those special offers. So once you've identified that, you can move on to step two. In step two, we're looking to choose our key content areas and then to break those down into smaller post ideas. Now I've spoken about this on other marketing videos, the idea of having nine core topics to use. So it's not just in social media content, you can use this in other content across the board. And I talked about that in your marketing calendar as well. So you really wanna think high level topics, all right? You don't wanna think of a micro topic because that could end up being a post. So you wanna think of big, broad topics. So for example, materials you use, your process, completed paintings, painting themes, color palette, travel inspiration, home decor, studio routine, and of course, promotions. So I've chosen these nine core topics because they relate specifically to the, all the areas of perhaps the business life in this example, all right? If your person's a painter and they have a specific process, they work in a nice place, they're inspired by travel, so they must be relevant to you. Don't just choose these nine because I've spoken them on this video, all right? Think about nine areas that work for you. If you teach, run workshops, or you're a pattern designer, or a sculptor or jeweler, think about areas that work for you and come up with nine high level core topics. You'll see that there's possibly a bit of a crossover between these nine core topics and what your audience is looking for. That's kind of what you're hoping is gonna happen here, okay? So now you take each of those nine core topics and you break them down again. So obviously, for example, if you had color palettes, then you'd break them down into specific colors potentially, but how you found the color palettes, pastel color palettes, vibrant color palettes, travel color palette, latest color palette, 
um, monotones, black and white, you know, my favorite pinks, right? You break it down again. If you come up with 10 new ideas for each of those nine key topics, and obviously you've got yourself 90 pieces of possible content. Which, let's face it, if you post it out equally across your year, it means you've got something for every fourth day. So it's pretty good. Or if you wanted to post consistently every single day for three months, then you've got the content for three months, right? And you can simply continue and go again after three months. Find a different 10 items under each of your key topics. Step number three, you want to choose your post type and the platform that it's going on. Okay, so now at this point, you have a whole spreadsheet full of content ideas. So now it's time to work out, like how are these gonna work best? Would it be best to have a written form, an image form, a video form, short form, long form video? What's gonna be the best content? Okay, so I've written down a bit of an example on my iPad. So let's just go through how that might look. So first up, your target audience that you've previously defined is looking for a gift idea, all right? So you've taken that off your list of things they could be looking for. So in this example, they're looking for a gift idea. Your topic from your nine core topics you've chosen is your completed work. So now let's break that down into 10 possible post ideas that might work here. So first up are some in situ images. So that finished completed work is gonna be put into images. Um, in a house, for example. Now, if you know your target audience, you're gonna make sure that those images are a match for your audience, all right? So if you know that your audience is into minimalistic, black and white, don't give them a colored frilly room because it's gonna be a no-no, all right? The second post you might have is close-ups. You might have zoomed in close-up bits so we can actually see the texture on the painting. Then you might have work in progress shots, right? This is how this painting came to fruition. Number four, you might create a post around, well, you can have it framed or not framed. What are the options? The next post might be a bit of a promo post that you're offering free delivery when you purchase the original in a certain area, for example. What rooms would this painting look good in? So a little bit similar to the in situ, but this could be a different type of content, right? The first one could potentially be pictures. This could be a blog. Let's just, we'll come to that in a minute where and how to display original art. This again could be more a general theme, but a helpful article for somebody who's looking for gifts, not quite sure, you know, this is a gift for my mum, say, and you know, I want to buy her original piece of art, but I don't really know anything about original art, where it would work in a house, etc. how to display it. So again, that could be a useful post. You could also create another bit of a sort of a promo type post that there are prints available. So don't want the original or perhaps can't afford the original. Did you know we have prints available? Or perhaps the original is enormous and you offer prints in a smaller size that would be perfect as a gift. So the next post could be a special offer, again, a promotion post, and perhaps thinking about those prints or any other product you might make from your art. You might say for the next five days, here's a code to get 20% off. This is perfect as a gift. So once you know that that's what your audience is looking for, it's much easier to serve up content that fits in with that, right? This is not rocket science, folks. We just need a little bit of time to plan it out. And the 10 one, again, might be a buy two prints and get one free. So there's a variety of things, and that's just 10. You could come up with another 10 and another 10. In fact, I challenge you to come up with another 10 ideas that would work along this for my example, and feel free to post in the comments below and say, I've got another 10, Sophie, all right? So next up, you can really think about, well, how would those pieces of content work best? Would they work best as images? Would they work best as a video, as a reel? So if we went back down that list, we could say, okay, in situ images, probably really good as a carousel. Close up images might be also good as a carousel, but could probably work quite nicely as a reel, a picture reel. Work in progress shots. Perhaps you could even make a little work in progress video, maybe even go live. Framed or no, not framed, that could be a nice little infographic. Free delivery on original, that's a promo, that could just be one image, or again, if you think of something creative or you just wanna speak the offer to the, to the camera, then that could be a really simple reel. Um, what rooms would the painting look good in? You could end up finding that that's a blog and you create an image 
promoting that blog, so sending people off to the blog. So you get the idea, right? You can choose how each one of these are gonna work best. So now in conclusion, you've got three simple steps to putting your content together on social media. My question to you is, are you actually gonna do it? Because I know it's one thing to watch this video and go, oh yeah, that's a great idea, maybe even take some notes, but it's a whole other one to actually put this into practice. Now, if you'd like some help with that, the accountability and putting the stuff into practice is exactly the sort of thing that I offer on my membership, the Art Business Academy. And I'm about to open the doors to that again this month in February. So if you'd like to get yourself on the waiting list, or if by the time you watch this video, the doors are open, there is a nice, big, juicy, fat link below this video that you can click through and get all the information. Because as we said, there's one thing to hear it, there's one thing to understand it and go, no, I know that's exactly what I need to do, Sophie. But there's a whole other area that is around accountability for actually doing it, actually putting it into practice, following through. What if you have questions as you go along? Well, in the membership, we've got a Q&A, chance for you to ask your questions. We've got a variety of ways that you can get feedback and you can get coaching and help and support. So if you would like some accountability, you want to put some of what I'm talking about here on YouTube into practice and actually move your business forward, then we'd love for you to join us in the Art Business Academy membership. Like I say, there is a link below this video where you can find out more. And in, Fe in time of shooting in February, I'm just about to open the doors again. So thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing your content out on social media. Feel free to tag me when you've created a post following this video. And I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Bye-bye.